With the inbuilt webcam on the studio display behind me continuing to disappoint, I wanted to find the best possible webcam solution. So I've just bought this, the Logitech 4K Brio. And in this video, we're gonna unbox it and I'm gonna give you my first thoughts. In my last video, I spoke about my first two months with the studio display. And on the whole, I couldn't be happier. The speakers sound great, the image is punchy, vibrant, colorful, and even across the whole display. And it looks good from every single angle, but of course, there is still that webcam, that woeful webcam to consider. Until recently, I've been using the Logitech C920. I already had that. I've been using it since I've got the studio display and it's great, I've got nothing against it, but I'm spending a lot more time online interviewing guests for my Minus 16 podcast like Sam Cole I had on recently for my update. So I just wanted to go 4K and that is why I bought this, the Logitech Brio. So let's find out what's in the box and what I think of it. So I've just had the successor to the ever so successful Logitech range of C920 and C922 cameras delivered. It is the Logitech Brio, as I mentioned. It was their first camera that shot in 4K. In this video, we're gonna unpack it, give you my first thoughts, and also discuss whether I would recommend it for you and who this camera is really for. The Logitech Brio is capable of capturing images in full 4K in UHD at 4096 by 2160. It's got five times zoom on it and it's HDR compatible as well. And via some software, the G Hub suite of software you download from Logitech, you have the choice of shooting in 1080p and 720p should you wish to. In the box itself, it's all pretty straightforward really, apart from the camera itself. You've got the connecting cable, USB-A at one end, USB-C at the other end. A lovely little touch, you've got a privacy screen that you can pop over the lens on a camera. I thought that was a nice little touch. There's a carry case and the normal paperwork that goes along with it as well. One thing they've changed from my outgoing C920 to this Brio is that the mount, the tripod mount, the threaded tripod mount is now directly on the body of the camera itself, which just makes it far more versatile to use. This camera really is plug and play. Out the box, you can use it straight away, but there is one bit of software that I do recommend you download to get the full functionality out of the camera, and that is the G-Hub software from Logitech. I'll show you downloading it a little bit and a few settings that I found that really help with the camera, but other than that, it's good to go. Gone is the plastic body from my old camera. In its place, you've got a metal body, and it's just generally much sleeker in design. There's still the dual microphone set up in there, but again, it fits into the body of this new layout and just looks tighter and neater. And onto the camera itself. Now, the first thing that really struck me was the low light capabilities of this Brio webcam. Normally, normally with webcams, you need as much light around you as possible. Good studio lighting would clearly help, but even in natural light or low light environments, the Brio really performed well. Lovely, lovely colours. I can't get over how good the colours look. You could almost think of shooting off a small point and shoot camera itself. And certainly if you put it side by side to the C920, you can see how much better the colour really is in the same environment. The colours look wonderful. A little bit early on, I mentioned that there was one critical bit of software that you should download from Logitech. It's called G-Hub, and we're going to take a look into it right now. So I just thought before I get into showing you the software itself from G-Hub, that I would show you what the camera quality was like using the original C920. Exactly the same studio, shot at exactly the same time under the same lighting conditions. And when you open up the G-Hub software, this is what you'll be greeted with. It will detect what bit of Logitech hardware you've got plugged in, in my case of Brio, and by clicking on it, it brings up this menu. And this is where you can make some changes. Under camera tab first. If you want to use any of their presets, they are all here. And if you want to make your own preset, simply add new camera mode and it will add it in here. And quite simple, just use the sliders. If you wanted a zoom at all, you would use that to make the zoom and you could save that as a preset. I've got mine on autofocus because I'm in a studio environment, I won't be touching the camera. And the same with the exposure, I'll leave that on auto because I'm in the studio environment under good lights. You've got the different angles and field of view there from the super wide 90 down to 78. And I'm leaving mine at 65 because I tend to have it quite tight to my head at the end and leave HDR ticked. Under video, it's equally easy and I suggest you go very cautiously here. You have got some filters in there if you wanted to use them. You could go to black and white or you could use a, a sickness one. <laughs> There's various little ones they've got in there. I think they run called zombie as well. By leaving it on none though, you can, if you want, go through here and make these adjustments. Now, I would suggest that you are very cautious with making any adjustments in here. I found Anything more than 5% tends to look really, really odd. So just go gentle. Sort of 2 3% is generally all you need if you find you want to alter your brightness at all, contrast, sharpness, white balance, or saturation. But they work well as they are. So just be very cautious with any changes you want to make. And that is how simple it is to control your brand new Brio webcam. And the color, as you can see, by comparison to the Logitech C920 that we had plugged in at the start, is so different. And just so you've got a point of reference, this is now recording from the dual mics I mentioned on the Logitech Brio. 
I know I keep coming back to it, but the colors that are coming out of this little Logitech webcam are just stunning. They are gorgeous. Now I'm going to be shooting in 4K most of the time, and I do have an M1 Max MacBook Pro, but just check on your system's capability because shooting in 4K is quite processor hungry. So just check on what the capability of your machine is. But of course you do have the option of shooting in 1080 or even in 720 if you haven't got a machine that's quite capable of handling the 4K, but do check before you start shooting. So who's this camera for? Well, anybody that's online really, if you wanted to record your YouTube videos with this, you certainly could. If you were live streaming on YouTube, again, this camera would work well. And if you're spending a lot of time on Zoom, like I am on conference calls and recording interviews, this is gonna take it to a whole nother level. You've got the five time zoom, you've got the whole range of features inside of the G Hub, you're shooting at 4K and you've got that amazing field of view from 90 degrees down to 65 degrees. But don't worry, if you can't afford this 4K or you think it's not for you, the Logitech C920 that I've been using for the last couple of years has done me proud and it's big brother as well, the C922. Both really, really good cameras, so you've got options there. But just remember to download that G Hub bit of software because it unlocks so many more features to make this camera really complete. So this is the first camera review that I've done on this channel, but hopefully you've enjoyed it. And if you have, why don't you stick around and watch me talk about the AirPods Pro, how great I think they are, but equally why I don't think you should buy them just yet. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.